Beloved Inter Miami fans, it is with a heavy heart that I bring you some bleak news today. I wish I could have shared happier updates, but this one calls for our reflection. Miss any of the latest developments. Ready? Let's dive into the news. Greetings, dear community viewers, Inter Miami. You are undoubtedly an incredible force, and today marks a departure from our usual light-hearted updates. It is important, however, that we approach this subject with depth and understanding. The journey continues and I ask that you stay engaged. Sign up to stay connected with everything, Inter Miami, and let's get started with the story. Getting messy, MLS fans embrace the art of football hooliganism. Football fans are starting to understand. South Florida football enthusiasts believed they had reached the pinnacle of fandom when Lionel Messi announced his merger with Inter Miami CF. It was a seismic shift for Magic City and for Major League Soccer, as the best soccer player in the world reportedly turned down a multi billion dollar overseas deal to feed our beloved, hard working team Inter Miami, nestled in the less illustrious league. But there is still a fundamental element missing from this narrative vandalism. Football's most entrenched nations have long known of football hooligans spectators who sometimes indulge in violent and disorderly behavior, driven by a passionate love for their teams. The British pioneered the booze-fueled football craze in 1885, when fans threw rocks and spit at players after a game between Preston North End and Aston Villa. Today, England boasts a roster of firm groups, including Hull City Psychos, Chelsea Headhunters and Naughty Forty. At this juncture, this phenomenon is so ingrained in the culture of English and European football that it can erupt hundreds of kilometers from the pitch. During the 2022 FIFA World Cup, Welsh and English tourists clashed outside a nightclub in Canary Islands, Spain, resulting in a huge brawl. A horde of fighters, including several middle-aged men, fought in the streets, trading punches and stools as onlookers captured the chaos on camera. In one of the most horrific cases of football-related violence, more than 70 people lost their lives in a fan attack in 2012 after a match between rival Premier League clubs in Egypt. Al Masri fans stormed the stands in Port Said armed with machetes, bottles, knives, and clubs after a comeback win against Cairo's Al Ali. Hooliganism extends to Latin American and South American leagues, where groups known as Barris Bravas often go to great lengths to support their teams. In Messi's native Argentina, these groups have a centuries old history, with some bars gaining a reputation for attacking rival fans. In 2013, in an effort to keep the peace, the Argentine Football Association banned visiting fans from attending professional football matches. While the major league soccer fandom hasn't achieved the distinction of machete-wielding violence, we're off to a decent start. On Sunday, August 6, Inter-Miami fans were vandalized when video captured fans, including one wearing a messy Argentina shirt, brawling in the lobby during the League Cup match between Inter-Miami and FC Dallas at Toyota Stadium. Are you watching this news and still haven't pressed the like? Go there and leave a like YouTube always recommends news, Inter-Miami, for you. The ardent Messi fan is seen throwing a series of punches at the wall, apparently engaged in a fight with two men, while a woman in a white shirt and black shorts fights in the background. He then takes the fight to the ground, grabbing one of his opponents by the leg and delivering blows, causing the hapless foe to lose his bucket hat from him. Most windmill punches miss the mark, which is probably for the best given the ferocity of the punches. Some spectators seem strangely unfazed by the brawl, recording the chaos on their phones next to a giant Heineken beer sign. At this point, it's unclear what triggered the brawl, who initiated the violence, or which of the fighters deserves the title of true hooligan. Regardless, online observers were intrigued to witness Americans learning proper football etiquette. Happy to see English football culture coming to America, wrote one commenter on the platform formerly known as Twitter. One user was shocked that hooligan culture. On the field, Messi scored two goals, leading Inter Miami to the fourth consecutive victory since his arrival. Miami now has a football team on its way to the championships, but as the team rises through the ranks, it remains to be seen whether those without cultures will fall into the displays of depravity and violence seen in global vandalism. 
great supporters of Inter Miami, unfortunately this is disappointing news. It is not about a lack of humility or arrogance. We are, without a doubt, the most powerful nation in the world. It's like the phrase, great powers require great responsibilities, we are the most patriotic, setting an example where we go. Who doesn't want to know or live in our country? We are truly examples and we cannot applaud vandalism, much less believe it. We must stand against this. We have fighted so much in the past for freedom, for the ideal country, the country of our dreams, and we are perceived like that. We cannot allow this to happen. I'm sure who started this was not American. We are not saints, but we are civilized. We will not lower the head, and thus, the initiator received what he deserves. But I urge you, if you know someone who participates, talk to them, and don't let the world's greatest sport be a reflection of violence. We love you, and I apologize for this outlook of emotion. Feel free to share your opinions, I would like to know what you think about it. And stay connected to this channel, because I am always looking to bring you the best. You are the best. Until the next news about our beloved, Inter Miami, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything.